In this video, we will do a request from the comment section involving a double angle of elevation. So while sailing towards the Statue of Liberty, a sailor in a boat observed that at a certain point, the angle of elevation of the tip of the torch was 24 degrees. After sailing another 120 meters towards the statue, the angle of elevation became 38 degrees 50 minutes. How tall is the statue? So uh, I've drawn a picture of the basic situation. We are being asked for the height of the statue, so I'm going to go ahead and call that X. Uh, at some points in the problem, we are going to need this uh, extra length. So I'm going to call this Y. Before I do anything else, we need to deal with this 50 minute business. Uh, let's convert this to a simple decimal. So look, 50 minutes is simply 50 sixtieths of a degree. So it's basically 50 sixtieth degrees. So we can just uh, put this in a calculator and approximate. So um, obviously 50 divided by 60, that's the same thing as 5 divided by 6. So that's approximately 0.83. So this is approximately 0 0.83. So that's what the 50 minutes is. So that means that this angle is the same as saying uh, 38 degrees, whoops, it's the same as saying 38.83 uh, degrees. So for the rest of the problem, I will just call this angle 38.83 degrees. So uh, essentially, we are going to have a system of equations. So look at this right triangle over here involving y. I could write the following equation. The tangent of 38.83 degrees. Well, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So that would be x over y. So by itself, I can't solve this equation. It has two variables in it. That is one variable too many. Let's set up a second equation using the larger triangle. So we can say that the tangent of 24 degrees is equal to opposite over adjacent. So the opposite leg is still the x, but the adjacent side is this whole thing, the 120 and the y together, the entire blue side. So I'm going to call this y plus 120. So again, this equation has two variables, so by itself it could not be solved. But we can solve this as a system of equations. Let's get one of the variables by itself in the blue equation, and then substitute that into the yellow equation. Eventually, I want to solve for x, so I think I will get y by itself in the blue equation, so I can substitute for y. That way, I'll have all x's. So if I want to get y by itself, we have learned that we can swap these. It's a little shortcut I always teach my students. Uh, whenever you have a number equal to a fraction, you can swap the denominator and the number. So this will become y equals x over tangent 38.83. So I can take this and substitute for y right here. This is going to become a pretty ugly expression, and it's going to be tedious, but we're going to get through it together. So don't worry, I'm here for you. Don't be scared. So instead of y, I'm going to put this. I'm going to put this x over tangent 
0.83. And then we still have the plus 120. Now this new yellow equation has only x's. So theoretically, I should be able to solve this equation. Focusing on the denominator, I'd like to combine the fraction and the 120. But in order to do that, I'm going to need uh, like denominators. So I'm going to multiply this by tangent 38.83 over tangent 38.83. Now I have like denominators, so I can combine these two fractions. All right, I'm going to slide this over a bit. So I have room to work. So this will be tangent of 24 is equal to x over. So I still have, um, so I'm combining these numerators. So I will have x plus 120 tangent 38.83 all over the common denominator of tangent 38.83. When you divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. So this should be the same as the tangent of 24 equals x times, uh, now here comes the reciprocal, tangent 38. 0.83 over x plus 120 times the tangent of 38.83. So multiplying this fraction by x really just puts that x in the numerator. So I'm simply going to have x tangent 38.83 in the numerator. I went ahead and slid the tangent 24 over to the left to make room for the next step because I need to multiply both sides by the denominator. I'm trying to flatten this whole equation out. So I'm multiplying both sides by x plus 120 tangent 38.83. Three on both sides. So x plus tangent, whoops, I forgot the 120. Uh, so on the right hand side, these are going to cancel out and I will have no more fraction. So as I recopy everything, I have tangent 24 times the quantity x plus 120 tangent 38.83 is equal to x tangent 38.83. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the distributive property with this tangent 24. So that's going to give me x times the tangent of 24 plus um, 120 tangent 38.83. And here comes that tangent 24. I'm just going to stick it on the end. So that's my distributive property. To solve a problem like this, we need to get the terms that have x in it together on one side of the equation. So in a way, I'm going to try to move this term over there. But really, the way I will accomplish that is by subtracting this from both sides. So this term will appear on the other side of the equation being subtracted. So we have this. 
Now the reason why I put these two terms that have x in it together on one side of the equation is so that now I can factor out a common factor of x. So I'm going to bring x outside of parentheses and then that will leave me with tangent 38.83 minus tangent 24. The left side of the equation stays exactly the same. So we can now get x by itself by dividing both sides of the equation by what we see in parentheses here. So if I divide both sides of the equation by tangent 38.83 minus tangent 24, that is going to get x by itself. Because, of course, these will cancel each other out, leaving x alone. But this entire expression is something that we can simply put in our calculator. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So in the numerator, we have 120 times the tangent of 38.83 times the tangent of 24. And then in the denominator, I have the tangent of 38.83 minus the tangent of 24. Boom. So this is the final answer. I'm going to round this to 119.6. And uh, the units were in meters. So the Statue of Liberty is approximately 119.6 meters tall according to this problem. Since this is an actual statue in the real world, let me say one thing. The person who requested this problem in the YouTube comments, they didn't actually say the Statue of Liberty in their request. Uh, they just said a statue, but then they mentioned the tip of the torch. So I sort of assumed that it was the Statue of Liberty, but there could be other statues that have a torch. So um, if the real Statue of Liberty is nowhere near 119.6 meters, if it's completely different, then... Um, Assume that it's a different statue other than the Statue of Liberty.